Hello and welcome to a new R programming webcast. Today I want to show you how to use RStudio project to stay organized in your data science project, as well as how to use the Git version control to keep track of all the changing of your code. So we will start with an example of a disorganized folder, and then we will see how we can use RStudio project on Git to tidy all this. Let's get started. So maybe you have uh, folders looking a bit like this and this disorganized slash two folder I just created as a little example. You may have different R code, R scripts with analysis a new version two from your analysis, which is a new version of your old version. You may have like ideas from a document or a R markdown, and you may even have R code from different projects at the same folder structure. So obviously this is definitely not best practices. And I want to show you how to use R project to tidy uh, all of this and also later on how to use Git to also follow best practices for versioning to avoid these uh, different files uh, of different uh, version of the same code. And I will also show you an option to uh, structure the folders on the different part of your analysis in a consistent way. So amongst your projects, you have the same structure of the folders, which also is best practices. Right, let's get started first by uh, seeing how to create a new R Studio project and later on how to connect it to Git version control. To create a new R project, all you have to do is go on the top right here of R Studio and click on new project. You will have a new window opening with three different options, a new directory, so creating a new folder, existing directory to use an existing directory and version control. This option, we will see that how to use it a bit later, but now I want to show you how to use a new directory. Then you will see different project types. You can create an empty new project and we'll go for this one, but you can use a template for our package for shiny application on different quarter options also. And if you have all the packages, you will have them also listed, for example, the plumber to create API, or our markdown, etc. So for the sake of simplicity, for now, I want to create an empty new project. So first you have to give it a directory name. So it will be the name of your folder. So we can call it organized. Then you can specify the subdirectory where your new project will be saved. As you can see here, I have created a project subdirectory and I would encourage you to also specify uh, where you put all your data science projects. You can even synchronize your different data science projects with the cloud. For example, here I'm using Microsoft OneDrive, but you can also use different uh, cloud solutions. And you have the option also to uh, use it directly with uh, Git, but I will not check this box. We will see that a bit later. And you can use our env, which is a package which allows you to track also the different packages you're using in this specific uh, RStudio project. I will recommend you to use it but uh, not show you how to do this and it can be done in another tutorial. So once we're happy with this, you can just click on create project. On note, you can also open this project in a new session. So you have different RStudio sessions, but we will not check this. So let's create a new project. And now, as you can see in our organized folder, we have a by default this R approach file. So this folder allows R Studio to recognize this is a specific R Studio project. And you can see in which project you're working. If you go here at the top right of R Studio, and the different projects you are working on are listed over here. And if I want to go back on my YouTube project, I just click on this and I will go back on the working directory of my YouTube project. So R Studio project allows you to by default specify the working directory at this root level. So let's give me an example to see how useful it is also to have by default your working directory at this level. Let's, let's create a new R script and call it analysis. And let's say that you're working for with a specific data set. Let's use the library uh, reader to uh, write a data set. So let's create a new CSV file from the Iris data set called data row.csv. So as you can see, I didn't have to specify the full path of the CSV. 
because by default the working directory is at this level so it has been saved over here similarly if you have a data set that you want to read and let's reuse this csv you can also just write the path from this working directory it could looks like this so this is very useful because it makes uh, your data science project portable so if you want to move this organized folder somewhere else on your computer you can just move it and the file path of your project will remain the same now how to organize in a consistent way the folder structures of your own R project. So personally, what I like to do is to follow the structure of R packages. R packages are like the standard for the R community. I want to show you here the structure of a typical R package from the R packages uh, ebook uh, from Adley Wickman, where you see the different element of a typical R package. So I will not go further about how to follow a R package structure, but as you can see here, you have some examples about best practices for R package development. And I'm also considering making a tutorial about best practices to develop R packages. But for now, I want just to come back on our topic, which is how to stay organized with RStudio projects. And I want to show you now in the second part how to connect Git and uh, GitHub to your R projects. So to connect Git to RStudio project, you have, I could say, two main options. One is to directly connect Git from an existing R Studio project using use this, for example. So you can call use this and use uh, git or use uh, github and please notice that the private argument is by default false so it will be by default public so if you want to keep your project private using the use github uh, function be sure to use the private argument as true otherwise it will be shared publicly online. The other way to do it, and this will be my recommendation to avoid Git issues, is to connect Git directly when you create a new project. So back on our options using version control and then Git. So what I like to do is first create my Git repository online, for example, on GitHub, copy the URL and then pass it here. So on GitHub, all you have to do is go on github.com slash new on your own account. So here you can give it the name of your data science project or description of your uh, data science project over here, which will be on GitHub only. You can choose to have it private. On the readme, we will create it ourselves in RStudio as well the git ignore on the license. So let's create this repository. And now all you have to do is just copy this HTTPS URL over here. So let's copy this and back in our clone directory option. So here in the three options, as we previously see, you just copy pass it over here. And by default, our studio will give it the name of your GitHub repository. So I would recommend you to keep it as such. And this will be saved again in the subdirectory you define. And all you can do is just create object. If you haven't already, you will have this GitHub sign-in option. So you can choose either a token or to sign in with your browser. So now once again, we have like our studio project, but this time is connecting with Git. So let's say now you have a specific R script analysis you want also to put in this data science project. And now I want to show you also how to leverage Git for staying organized. So as you can notice here, we have this little Git panel view, which shows you the different files that haven't been pushed to Git. This is not a full tutorial about Git, but I want you to have a grasp about how Git is useful. So the first thing I want to drag your attention is to this .git ignore file over here. So if you don't want to share a specific file in particular like credential, so we'll write the name of the credential file over here and it will not be pushed on GitHub when you click the push button. Now to push the specific files or folders on GitHub, all you have to do is go on this Git view over here and check the files you want to share. So let's say we want to commit these ones. We will select them all and click on commit. Then you have to write a commit message, for example, initial commit. You click on commit 
and then push. So if I go back on my initial repository, which was empty and I refresh the page, I will see now that the three folders I have in RStudio are now on GitHub. Now, if I go back over here, I can check that my files are up to date for the version that is on GitHub. I can click on pull and I see that everything is up to date, meaning that what is online is similar to what is on my local computer. Now, that's the interesting part, I think, also to stay organized is that you can version the different modifications of your code over time and also see which code haven't been pushed on GitHub yet. So here, let's say you start your new analysis with a new code. If I save uh, my uh, file, I will see now the differences that happened in this specific file on all the different files that have been changed over time. So I see that I changed this. So let's say now I want to share this on my uh, GitHub repository. You can write this in the commit message, click again on commit and push. So now again on my data science uh, repository, I would see that this code has been pushed on GitHub. And I see the comment I just made here. Now the interesting thing is that by mistake, let's say you wrote some typo over here, which was unintended. It may be hard to see these little typos. I mean, this is quite obvious, but let's say I have this like this, you may not see it. However, you will see all the uh, last modification here in this Git view panel. What you can do is click on right click and go on the diff selected files. And here you will see the different modification that has been done. So you see here the new analysis, you haven't changed anything. However, you see there is a difference in this uh, line three. This allows you to spot uh, possible typos or mistakes you did, but also see where are the last modifications and what is your work on this project. What are the last uh, modification you did on this uh, project? And every time you make an important change, you will commit it with a commit message. And Git allows you also to come back in different version you did. It's a very complex and powerful tool for versioning. If you found this tutorial useful, feel free to like and even consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and I see you in another video. Bye bye.